Have you ever looked at a pile of grass clippings and dry leaves and wondered if you could do more with them? We certainly have. It led us to a fascinating question, one that sits at the very heart of regenerative gardening. What really happens when you introduce a simple, powerful catalyst like molasses into the mix? We wanted to know, would this sugary boost create a slimy, pest-ridden mess, or could it be the secret to unlocking a microbial explosion, supercharging the very life within our soil? We decided to put it to the test, documenting every step of the way to see if this humble kitchen staple could truly transform garden waste into black gold. To understand the theory, you have to think like a microbe. Molasses is essentially pure, unrefined plant sugar, a readily available source of simple carbohydrates. For the microscopic bacteria and fungi in your soil, this is like a five-star energy drink. They crave it. Now consider the other ingredients. Fresh grass clippings are bursting with nitrogen, the protein building block for new life. Dry leaves, on the other hand, are rich in carbon, the structural backbone of all organic matter. When you combine this trio, the instant energy of sugar, the protein from nitrogen, and the substance of carbon, you're not just making a compost pile. You are intentionally setting the stage for a microbial powerhouse, creating the perfect recipe to kickstart the entire soil food web. Our method was simple and precise. We started by creating our microbial stimulant. We dissolved two tablespoons of unsulfured blackstrap molasses into a liter of warm water. The warm water helps the thick syrup dissolve completely, ensuring an even distribution. Why this ratio? It's concentrated enough to provide a significant energy source, but diluted enough to avoid creating a sticky anaerobic mat. We then took our fresh grass clippings and lightly coated them. We didn't want them dripping, just damp to the touch. Next came the layering, often called the lasagna method. We laid down a 4-inch layer of our carbon-rich dry leaves, followed by a 2-inch layer of the nitrogen-rich molasses-treated grass. We repeated this, creating alternating brown and green layers. Finally, we gave the entire pile a light moistening with plain water, aiming for the consistency of a wrung-out sponge. The goal was clear. Feed the soil microbes an optimal diet without drowning them or creating a slimy mess. The reaction was almost immediate. Within just a few hours, a distinct pleasant aroma began to rise from the pile, not the smell of decay, but the rich clean scent of damp earth after a summer rain. This is the first sign that the bacteria have arrived and are getting to work. As the sun set, we noticed the pile had already begun to warm up, a clear indicator of intense microbial activity. The bacteria were consuming the simple sugars from the molasses and respiring, releasing heat as a byproduct. Crucially, there was no foul odor, no sign of unwanted pests. It was simply the beautiful quiet hum of nature waking up and getting down to business. By day three, the transformation was becoming visible to the naked eye. As we carefully peeled back the top layer, we saw it. A delicate, intricate network of fungal mycelium. These white, thread-like structures are the vegetative body of fungi, the master decomposers of the soil world. Fueled by the initial bacterial bloom, the fungi were now colonizing the pile, beginning their work of breaking down the tougher, more complex carbon compounds in the dry leaves, like cellulose and lignin. The molasses-fed microbes were multiplying exponentially. The leaves, once brittle, had softened considerably, and the vibrant green grass clippings were already darkening, melting into a rich, homogeneous blend. The pile was alive. One week in, we discovered new residents had moved in. Earthworms, the ultimate soil engineers, were migrating up from the soil below, drawn into the pile by the irresistible combination of available sugars, moisture, and softening organic matter. Their presence is a fantastic sign. As they tunnel through the mix, they aerate it, preventing compaction and anaerobic spots. More importantly, they consume the decomposing material and excrete castings, a super-concentrated, perfectly balanced plant fertilizer. Beneath the surface, the material no longer resembled distinct layers of grass and leaves. It was becoming a darker, richer, and more uniform substance. The smell had evolved too, now deeper and sweeter, exactly like a forest floor after a cleansing rain. So what's the science behind this rapid decomposition? It's a beautiful, cascading process. The molasses provides a burst of simple sugars, which feeds the fast-acting bacteria first. They are the primary decomposers, and their population explodes. This bacterial bloom becomes a food source for the next trophic level. Predators like protozoa and beneficial nematodes. As these predators consume the bacteria, they excrete 
the excess nitrogen locked in the bacteria's bodies, releasing it in a plant-available form. Meanwhile, the fungi are hard at work breaking down the tough woody materials. Finally, the earthworms and other macroorganisms arrive to shred the material, aerate the pile, and mix everything together. This entire ecosystem works in concert to convert those raw clippings and leaves into stable humus, a complex, dark, spongy material that locks carbon safely in the soil while slowly releasing vital nutrients for your plants. After just two weeks, the difference between our test pile and a control pile without molasses was striking. The molasses-activated mix had broken down at least twice as fast, achieving a state in 14 days that might normally take over a month. The material was darker, more uniform, and teeming with life. We also observed a huge benefit for the soil below. The treated area remained noticeably more moist, acting like a sponge. Its surface crusted over far less in the sun, meaning better water infiltration. Even during a spell of dry weather, the soil under the molasses-treated mulch held its structure and moisture, demonstrating its enhanced resilience. It's incredible to think that just a tablespoon of molasses per liter of water could orchestrate such a profound transformation, turning a simple pile of garden waste into a vibrant, living soil food. But the success of this method hinges on one critical word, balance. It's a common concern. Won't all that sugar attract pests like ants or cause a slimy, moldy mess? The answer lies in the dosage and application. If you use too much sugar, or if your pile is too wet, you risk creating anaerobic conditions, which can lead to foul odors and attract the wrong crowd. The key is to provide just enough to kickstart the microbial engine without overwhelming it. Always cover your fresh sugary layers with a brown carbon layer like leaves or wood chips to discourage pests. And remember the squeeze test. Your pile should only release a drop or two of water when squeezed firmly. Get the balance right. And you're not just feeding microbes, you're feeding the entire underground network that sustains your garden. So the next time you mow your lawn, don't see it as a chore. See it as an opportunity. An opportunity to harvest nitrogen, to partner with nature, and to brew life itself. Dip those grass clippings in a little molasses water, layer them with last season's fallen leaves, and watch the magic unfold. It's a free, simple, and wildly effective technique for building soil health from the ground up. You're not just composting or getting rid of waste, you are actively cultivating a resilient, living ecosystem right in your own backyard. Our experiment was a resounding success, proving that a little bit of knowledge and a touch of sugar can go a long way. If you enjoyed digging into the science behind this process and want to see more experiments like it, be sure to subscribe to Soil Story. We're dedicated to bringing soil science to life, helping you build a healthier garden, one living bed at a time.